Welcome to the testing world. In this session, we are going to understand first type of assertion in which we are going to validate a page URL. We can make different type of validations. It's the first type of validation that we can do. Here, I can take one example where we can use this assertion. So I'm taking an example like a person is going to the login page and after login, it should move to the home page. When I'm automating the login page, I entered username and password and click on the sign in button. Now I want to validate I'm on the home page or not. I'm on the next page or not. So in that kind of scenario, when you want to validate we are on the correct page or not, we can validate that page by using URL. But this kind of validation only apply on the pages where we are going to get static URL. Static URL means the URL of the page will always be same. So here what I'm going to do, I'm going to start a Facebook page and once the page is loaded, I want to validate the URL. So I'm just moving to my Eclipse. And that is a test case which we have seen in the previous session. It is just opening the browser, then opening the facebook.com. And here we are finding some element. Validation can be applied anywhere in the test case. Here I want to validate I'm on the correct page or not. Now I have a question over here. This validate URL can be used only in the one test case. Answer is no, it can be used for the multiple pages in the multiple test cases. So rather than writing the code here in the test case, it's a good practice to create a new method in a different class and wherever required, just call it. So I'm going to another package. I'm just giving the name of the package is verify. I'm going to create one class here with the name compare. And now here I'm going to write the code of validating URL. So I'm creating a method public void validate URL. Right. Here we need two items actual URL and expected URL. So we can ask expected URL from the user or from the test case designer expected URL from the test case designer who is going to call this method. So expected URL we can get from the test case designer who is going to call this method. Here we need driver object as well because we need to pick actual URL from the browser. And for picking the actual URL from the browser, we need driver because object of the web driver, it is, it is initiating the browser. So we can pick actual URL from the browser for that we need driver object. So I'm just writing like web driver driver. So whatever the object my test case designer is going to pass means whatever the browser will be started test case designer is going to pass that object. I'm going to use this object. Here we need two argument. One is the driver object and other one is the expected URL. Now I'm going to validate. So I'm taking a variable of the boolean type with the name result. So I have a variable with the name result and the by default value is false. Now I'm checking if driver dot get current URL. So there is a method get current URL which we can call through the web driver object. This method is going to return URL of the browser. So whatever the URL which is currently open on the browser, this method is going to return that value. I'm just comparing with equals ignore case. I'm just using ignore case means if the cases are different, still validate it. And I'm comparing it with the expected URL. If these two values are match means my actual URL which is picked by the get current URL is matching with the expected URL. In that case, set the result value is equal to true. And now this method is going to return 
this result value because we are returning some value so data type of this result is boolean so on the place of the void we need to mention boolean so very simple validation is ready which is taking driver and the expected url validating actual url with expected url and if match it's going to return true else by default it's false so it's going to return false very basic validation is ready to be executed now my validation is ready i'm just moving to my test case and here i want to call that validation because it's a method which is written in the compare class so first we need to create the object of the compare class so compare compare new compare i just created the object of the compare class and now we can call the method but point over here is that assertion method can be called in one test case or maybe in many test case so here we have a one test case in the class tc001 we can have hundreds of classes in which we have hundreds of test cases so whenever we need to call that do we need to create the object as of now yes because every time when we want to make assertion we have to use the compare cl class object and to create a compare class object we have to make the object of the class so do we have any shortcut for that so answer is yes we can make that method static so advantage is that we have already covered a static keyword advantage is that static method can be called directly by the class name so now if you want to call that method we just need to mention the class name so compare dot validate url driver because we have already created the object of the driver so we are passing this driver this driver will be passed to this method where it is required driver and other is expected url so what's your expected url so in my case expected url is facebook.com forward slash so that's that's my expected url when we call this method it's going to return either true or false so whatever the value it's going to return i'm just creating a boolean kind of variable boolean result whatever the result it's going to return i'm storing into that result variable now as we have already seen we can use different assertions which are provided by testng itself so i'm going to use these assertions so assert dot what are you expecting over here i'm expecting this method should return true because that's my expected url so i'm as i'm expecting this method should return true so i'm just writing like i'm expecting assert true and whatever the result which is returned by that method is placed over here so that's my expected like i'm expecting this method should return true and that's the actual result which is coming from this method i'm just running this test case and as of now you will notice it will pass because what i'm expecting it's same as what actually is coming so actual and expected are match this method is matching actual and expected url and returning true and i was expecting true as well so it is passed i'm just going to make some changes to fill this test case so here this time my expected url is this when we call this method that's expected url when we are going to call that method we are going to get false in the result but we are expecting true so this test case should fail in this case i am just running it and here we can see it's a failure if we go at the top we will notice failure because we are expecting this but found this 
Now, point over here is when we are writing a bigger test case with the multiple assertion, how we can identify which assertion is filled. So here we can call the assert true method. We are calling this assert true method with one argument. We can call it with the two arguments. So in the second argument, we can pass the message that we want to display in case of the failure of the assertion. So in the second argument, I'm passing error not matching actual URL with expected URL. So that's a message that you can display on the console, whatever that you can display on the console in the case of the failure of the assertion. So if this assertion is going to be passed, I'm just going to pass it. This message will not display, but in case of the failure, it's going to display. So first I'll show you in case of the pass. I'm just running it. This time assertion is passed. Nothing displayed over here. Now I'm going to fail it. This time it's failed. And here we are getting we are getting assertion error and that's the message we are getting error because it is not matching actual URL with expected URL. So we have seen first kind of assertion in which we can validate any page URL because now I'm on the test case one I'm expecting if we have one more test case I give you an example like I'm just copy pasting this test case I'm taking example when we are having the multiple test case. So in second test case might be you are expecting any other URL. So method is same. We are just calling this method from the different test cases. So that's the advantage. We have created this method in a separate class and wherever in the test case it is required, we are just calling it. So that's the advantage of writing into the separate class. One more update. I want to do it over here. Here we can see we are calling this method which is giving us actual result means either true or false. And we are storing the result into the result variable. What we can do, we can just write this method here on the assert directly. So in this case, we need not to write this line and we need not to create this variable as well. So that's a bit of optimization. We need not to write, we need not to create an extra variable because this method will be called, it will result either true or false. Here, I'm expecting true or false. And if you're expecting true or false, then it's showing pass or fail. One more point I want to cover over here. As of now, we are expecting assert true, means I am expecting this URL should be matched. But we can take a negative test case as well. Like I'm expecting this URL assert false over here means I'm expecting this URL should not exist on the page. So that's my negative test case. So I'm expecting it should not be there. If we validate this URL, this URL is not going to be there. So this method is going to return false. I'm expecting false as well. So ultimately this test case will pass. So I'm just running it. And here you will notice because it's not the correct URL which should come on the page. We are expecting it should not be there. Here everything is passed because that URL is not coming on the page. So now it's up to us. We are calling the method assert true or assert false. We can understand the use of these both the methods. So here we have seen how we can validate page URL, the first assertion that we have created. That's all we have for this session. Thanks for watching this video.